Welcome to another video by Pharos Technology. Today we're going to talk about Microsoft Word and how to use fonts in Word. How to choose them, how to adjust them. So I'm going to choose a blank document and the main focus is going to be this small part of the ribbon here that is dealing with fonts. Now fonts come in two varieties. The first variety is a serif font, and a serif font is a font that has little extensions. Like if I were to choose Times New Roman, notice that on the T it has the little downward, those little downward pieces on the top of the T. Instead of going just straight down and ending at the bottom, it has these little pieces going out to the right and left. On the N, you'll see the little flip to the left on the top of the N, and on the bottom of the end, it comes down like the T does, and I's do the same thing. And, and you see just a little extra. If I were to just choose a sans serif font, in other words, a font without serifs, it would be a font like Calibri that is the default font that you see. Now, notice the difference between the letters here. The sans serif font, you can compare the N here with the N over here. Sans serif doesn't have the little extra. So those are the two types of fonts. And, and when you're writing reports or you're writing for particular authors that want you to present your information to them, you're going to want to choose a font that is appropriate for what their needs are. So in general report writing, you'll you'll either choose a clear font, serif or sans serif font. You would not choose something like Comic Sans, for example, to hand in a report to, uh, to a college or a university. You would choose a font that is generally what we would consider kind of mainstream and Calibri and Times New Roman are the two mainstream um, fonts that exist today. Now, font sizes. I, I chose 36 for a reason. 36 for a common font is a full half inch high. Now, that would be a half inch from the bottoms of the G, for example, those letters that have what they call extenders below the line, all the way up to the top of a capital letter would be a half inch in this case. If you wanted a full inch, then you would choose 72 for your font. So if you're, if you're doing a postcard, let's say you're doing a four by six card that you're putting on someplace as a sign and you want one inch high fonts, then you would choose 72. Now remember when I say 72, it's somewhat of a guideline because if you go to, my favorite non-conforming font is, is Comic Sans. The Comic Sans font doesn't measure appropriately that way. And a lot of your handwriting type of, or calligraphy type of fonts don't conform to this height requirement where 72 is is just an inch but more your mainstream fonts like like Arial and Calibri and Times New Roman uh, do conform to that half inch full inch full inch at 72 points and half inch at 36 points the default that you see in word is going to be Calibri 11 points what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this out and I'm going to open the dialog box. This one allows you to choose the various different fonts here. So I can choose a number of fonts here. And if you click the down arrow here, you can see an example of what each of those fonts look like that are, you know, outside the dialog box, it gives you a better, easier to see example than in the dialog box. So a lot of times I'll browse through here to choose, choose my font from over here. Now, fonts are an interesting thing. Uh, when I first started working in computers, I worked uh, at a place that sold software and fonts were sold by Adobe as individual items that you had to purchase in order to run your print shop. And we had, I had a print shop order that, that came through and the man ordered from me $17,000 just in fonts. So it, once upon a time, fonts cost you a lot of money. It was before the time when, when there were what they called 
true type fonts that came out with Windows 3.1 and then later not later in time it grew to all of these fonts being pretty much in the public domain now you 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 get word and you get this huge list of fonts now and they can cover most of your needs and notice I'm in only in the A's and B's and I've gone through a lot of the the fonts and I finally got down to D's and E's there are a lot of fonts here to meet any uh, print shop need. Now let's look at this here a little bit. Now, font style, we've got italics, bold, bold italic. Notice over here, we've got effects called underline and colors, different font colors. The underlining style, notice it's not just underline here, but it can be underlined just the words. The spaces between the words, leave them not underlined. Or you can just have a straight underline or a double underline, a thick, dotted, dashed, all kinds of different uh, ways to do it. Dot, dot, dash, and wavy lines, all kinds of different things. Different ways that you can highlight your font in your document. The underline color, once you choose one here, you can choose a separate underline color even. And notice, you know, when you use spell check and stuff, it's always a red wavy underline. If you use grammar check, it'll be a blue wavy or a purple wavy underline, depending. Now, the font color is, is automatic at first, and automatic means that it's going to be black unless you choose otherwise. So the font color can be chosen from here as well. Now, there's different effects here. Uh, small caps is kind of interesting. If you, if you look at small caps, notice it changes Calibri down here. Uncheck it here. Calibri is regular capital undercase here. Small caps makes it the capital C is a little bit taller than the rest, but they all look like capitals. But the lowercase ones are a little shorter capitals than the other. If I decide to make it all caps, it's the full size capitals all the way. You ever want to send secret notes to your friends? Well, you could always use hidden font. And hidden font means that it disappears until somebody highlights that area of the document and changes it from hidden to not being hidden any longer. It's kind of a, a neat way to share a document with somebody and have it have a secret message in it for those of you who like to do that. And then we've got strike through, great for editing. Like for example, if you're sending a document around for other people to proof and give feedback, those people can do a strike through to say, I want to get rid of this sentence and maybe replace it with another one and, and underline that. You've got double strike through. Superscript and subscript are neat. Superscript is like having a, an exponent on a number. It's, a, it's above and in the top of the lettering in really small type compared to the regular size. And subscript is the same, only it's below. So... In this dialog box, you do get the, the preview down here so that you can see what's going to happen as you change the different items. Now, on the advanced tab, you have uh, the scaling of a font. Like, for example, this is the character spaced scaling. At 100%, it just looks normal. But if you change it to a smaller number, the letters start squishing together a little bit more. If you change it to a bigger number, they start stretching apart. And so the spacing between the lines would be normal here and the position would be normal here. So you can choose expanded or condensed here, spacing for each of the letters and positioning. You can raise or lower them within the, the line that you're using. And you can tell, you know, if you're going to raise it, you can tell how many, how much you want to raise a particular character. That, so you can make kind of your own superscript or your own subscript. Kerning is another uh, font related term. Kerning, for example, is, let me show you real quick. If I change this to courier, to courier and type, and I type my name is Richard, notice the the fonts seem very, very regular. Courier is what they call a monospaced font, meaning this M takes up just as much space as this Y, and in fact takes just as much space as this R, as this I for Richard. So all of the letters are pretty much the same. Used a bad example using the M. The N would be same, pretty much the same as the I, and the C, and the H. Very monospaced, okay? Now, in kerning, what happens is you choosing like Calibri, and I choose 
to write the same thing. Notice it writes it in so much smaller. You notice that the I doesn't take near as much space as this I up here does. Space between them is much smaller between the between the uh, characters, the space between the 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 words. Um, Monospaced fonts tend to take up a lot more space. And if you were in a typing class, for example, and you used a regular typewriter, all of those fonts were monospaced fonts because those the fonts on there, most of the time they were Times New Roman or Times Roman back then. And those fonts, of course, had to have the same amount of space all the time. So your lines were 80 characters long. Well, when computers came along, computers had the ability to analyze the characters and be able to put the characters closer together or farther apart and make them more readable and, and actually take up a whole lot less space. So what this is called is kerning, when uh, when the letters are put, put together to take only the space they need rather than the space, just a arbitrary designated space like on the old typewriters. So when we look at this advanced tab here and see kerning for fonts, you can kern them even closer than the normal kerning. Probably not something that you'd use all that often. Open type features, way more advanced than what uh, most people need at this point. You've got number spacing, you've got number forms, you've got uh, stylistic sets. There, it's something I've never used. Uh, and on, honestly, something I've never researched. Now, I've done documents that have been two, three, four hundred page long you know, in the respect that I've done my dissertation and other long documents, and I've never come to the point where I've needed or wanted to use these open type features. So they're there. You can easily research those if you find that you uh, need to understand them. Uh, you have text effects here. You can change these effects and notice it's, you know, the gradient fill and so forth. This is filling the space around the text and making kind of like the word art type of text effect here. You can set a particular font or change changes that you've made as default for this document or for all documents based on the normal template that opens when you first open Word. Okay, so that's our tour today of fonts and what they do for you and how to change them. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this and come back and see us again sometime. Thanks.